What's going on guys? Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review of the entire lineup of brand new balls for the 2018 FIFA World Cup, including the official match ball, the Telstar 18. The Telstar 18 lineup as of right now consists of three different soccer balls and one mini. At the very top, you have the Telstar 18 official match ball, which is available in the regular white, which we'll see pretty much throughout the entire tournament, as well as a bright orange winter ball variation, retailing at $165. Below that, you have the top replique version, which retails for $40. Then you have the top glider, which retails for $30 US. And finally, the mini ball, retailing for only $13. We're going to go over every single one in detail, talk about the differences, and essentially cover which ones are worth it and which ones you should stay away from. Also, if you're interested in any of the balls I'm going to talk about in today's video, you can click the first link down below in the description or the little pop-up on screen. That'll take you to the review page on my website, where you'll find Buy It Now links for every single one, along with exclusive SR4U coupon codes, where you'll be able to pick them up below their normal retail price. Before we get into the specifics, I want to talk about the design and inspiration because we're going to be seeing a lot of this ball over the next year. So Telstar 18, Telstar being a name that we've seen before from the Adidas brand originally in 1970 for the Mexico World Cup, Adidas' first ever World Cup match ball that they provided. It was called the Telstar. The, the, the idea behind the Telstar name being to signify the star of television, which I think is a very fitting name. And they're bringing that theme back for 2018 in Russia. So the ball itself has a white base with black detailing, very, very similar to that original ball from 1970, which bears a very classic and traditional look to it. This definitely doesn't look as traditional, kind of has a bit of a Minecraft looking theme to me with the black fading to gray, eventually fading to silver in this pixelated design. But as a whole, I definitely think that the idea of making a more retro vibe, but at the same time making the ball look somewhat modern, I think they did a pretty good job at. You can see all the logos on the ball, the Adidas branding, the Telstar logo, where it does say official match ball, and of course the 2018 Russia logo, all in kind of like a slightly metallic bronze color. You got the FIFA approved stamp right there with a silver box outlining it with the NFC reader uh, logo right there. And then you're also going to find right around the valve, which is red in color. Usually they're always black. So that's kind of an interesting thing. All the details around that are also that same bronze. So overall, I think the ball looks pretty good. I don't think it's the best looking World Cup ball that we've ever seen, but I don't think it's ugly enough to where we should be complaining. But that's just my opinion. Let me know yours down below in the comments. So how is this year's World Cup ball? Well, it's pretty good, but honestly not that much different than what we've seen in the past from the Adidas brand. From a performance standpoint, the design is interesting, the look is interesting, the price is also more expensive than it's ever been, now with a retail price of $165 rather than $160 as we saw in 2014 with the Brazuca match ball. And really, I think the Telstar 18 is pretty much, or at least can be labeled as, a Brazuca 2.0 because it features pretty much the same panel consistency and feel, pretty much a similar panel design, and realistically very, very similar performance characteristics, which is not a bad thing at all. Now keep in mind, when the Brazuca first came out in 2014 for the World Cup, for basically that year, until the next year, the ball basically remained exactly the same. And then on the third and fourth year of Brazuca variants, after the World Cup, when they used it for different leagues and different tournaments, it got a little bit of modifications. And that's kind of what this is most similar to, the most recent variants of the Brazuca match ball. And that's not a bad thing, because the Brazuca match balls are very, very good. Now, what you're gonna find is probably the most unusual panel shape that I've ever seen on a soccer ball. And it's really, really difficult to make it out in online pictures because of the way they did the graphics. But I'm gonna trace it with my finger and hopefully you guys can follow just to see how weird this panel shape is. So the panel goes like this and there are six of them in total that interlock. So it goes here, here, down to this, and we are back at the starting point right here. Really, really, really weird. So basically, because of this six panel design, you end up with a front panel, a back panel, two side panels, and then a top and bottom, which is an interesting way of making a soccer ball. And obviously the end result is a perfectly round product. 
all of the panels themselves are thermally bonded and really the quality is top notch as you would expect from any top end match ball from the Adidas brand. You're also going to notice that it does have this very slight micro texturing on the surface, which again is on par with what we've been seeing lately from top of the line Adidas match ball. So not too surprising there whatsoever. The ball is of course FIFA approved. This is the exact same match ball that you're going to see the pros use on TV. And really it just feels like a bazooka to me, very similar in weight, very similar in terms of touch when you're juggling, when you're shooting the ball, when you're passing the ball, the way it flies through the air, because it is such a similar design, still maintaining that six panel construction, it just doesn't feel that similar, which is not a bad thing, again, because the Brazuka was such a good performer. So if you have the money to spend, buy the Telstar 18 because it is the new World Cup ball. You'll probably end up buying it at some point in time. But if you don't necessarily want to spend the $165 premium, buy an older bazooka variation that's on sale right now and you're pretty much going to get the same experience for a lot less money. There's also a winter ball variation of the Telstar 18, which is exactly the same as the white one I just showed you, also the same $165 but it's orange instead of white. And the reason why this exists is because FIFA requires it to exist. This is the ball that they'll use in the case of severe weather, where a white ball would not be sufficient from a visibility standpoint, but the likelihood of that happening is pretty much 0%, which is why this is a match ball that they'll sell, but you'll probably never see used in the tournament, not even once. So if you wanna buy a match ball that's going to be the more rare or more uncommon of the two that are available, definitely go for the winter ball rather than the regular variation, even though it's never gonna get used in the tournament, or at least it's very unlikely that it will get used. This year's World Cup match ball also features an NFC chip, the first ball ever to have this. What does that mean? It means you're gonna be seeing a lot of this. Hey dude, can I just, for just one second, I just need to see this real quick. Yep, yeah, thanks. No, it's fine, it's just gonna take a second. Just, I just need to get my phone, I need to, just, I gotta open up the app, give me a second. Give me a second. It's, it's not working, give me just one second. What's an NFC chip? NFC stands for near field communication. So similar to a debit card or credit card, you'll actually be able to tap the ball with your phone as long as it has an NFC reader and it'll basically take you to a website to put it as simply as possible. You're gonna see the NFC logo right here on the ball in silver underneath the FIFA approved badge. So when you tap your phone to the ball, it'll basically take you to a web page that'll reveal a couple bits of information about the ball itself, as well as promotional stuff that Adidas is doing leading up to the World Cup, I'm sure after and during the World Cup as well. And of course, it'll be a great way for them to promote new products as well. It's a good idea from an Adidas standpoint, but as far as how much it's really bringing you as a customer in terms of overall value, I would say very little. They're saying that they're gonna say give promotions and potentially coupons because you purchased or because you tapped a Telstar 18 ball. But again, until this develops a little bit further, it's really, really difficult to say. As of right now, if you tap the ball, it'll reveal how many times your ball has been tapped with a phone. And it'll also tell you where in the world the ball has been tapped, which is kind of an interesting thing as well. It also tells you how many total Telstar 18s have been tapped. And then as of right now, there is one challenge issued for Instagram where you use hashtag Telstar 18, show some skills off, whether it be some juggling, a shot, whatever it may be. I showed my skills off at the start with the tackle just because I thought that'd be a little bit more original and you could potentially win tickets to the upcoming World Cup. And again, there's gonna be updates as time goes on leading up to the World Cup and likely during the tournament as well. So if you see somebody else's Telstar ball or if you have one yourself, go and tap it and I guess find out what it tells you. Moving on, we have the Telstar 18 Top Replique, which retails for a mere $40 in comparison to the $165 of the official match ball, meaning that you can buy four Top Repliques and still have $5 left over. But how is it, considering that it is still $40? It's not super cheap. You can obviously find less expensive soccer balls. The answer to that question is it's decent, but at the same time, it's kind of weird. Obviously the visuals of the ball, very, very similar, but the panel construction is completely different than the Telstar 18. More so in the fact that it's kind of the same panel design, but it's broken up into many more panels. So you'll find right away there's a square, which I thought was weird right off the bat. But then around the squares, you'll notice that there are two rectangles kind of stacked 
going up and down and then filling up what is basically this kind of cross shape you have these triangle bits which are made up of three more panels that are five-sided shapes not exactly sure what you would call those and that is what makes up the entirety of this ball so how many panels in total are there here really really difficult to say i tried counting but i gave up because i couldn't keep count You'd have to basically like mark them individually, or maybe if you're good at math, there's some kind of equation you could figure out here. But just know there are a lot of panels and the end result is a ball that does look and feel perfectly round. So no major complaints there. All of the panels themselves are thermally bonded, which is nice. And the build quality, while not as good as the official match ball, I would say is above average in general, especially for a top replique product from the Adidas brand, because this line always exists, but the quality can sometimes be hit or miss. This one seems to be very well made. In the tech specs, you'll find that it's listed as TB, TSBE technology, which stands for threadless, seamless, beveled edge. Again, just fancy terminology for thermally bonded, meaning that there's no stitching here. So the durability should be very good. You're gonna notice on the surface, it has this very fine kind of micro texturing and kind of a grid pattern. To me, this feels a little bit cheap, but at the same time, it's kind of expected at this particular price point. And you're also gonna find that it does have the FIFA badge right there. This is not a FIFA approved match ball, but according to the tech specs and this FIFA stamp, it does actually meet FIFA requirements in terms of performance characteristic, uh, the, the weight of the ball, the shape of the ball. Uh, so take that for what it is. It's not as good as the official match ball, but for $40, I definitely do think that it's a decent value if you don't have the 165 to spend on the real thing. At the lowest price point, we have the Telstar 18 Top Glider, which retails for $30. And I'll say this right off the bat. If you're debating between the Top Glider and the Top Replique, spend the extra $10 and buy the Top Replique. It is 10 times better than this. The Top Glider, and really the glider line in general from Adidas, always tends to be fairly low quality. They're gonna sell a ton of these. This is gonna be the most popular, best-selling World Cup ball out of the whole line, mainly because it's the cheapest. But really what you're getting here is honestly something not very good at all. Again, the panel design changes. You maintain a square, but now you have these parallelograms that almost look like they're all kind of stretched together. There's some edges that are curved. There's some edges that are straight. The construction of this ball just is not very good. It's all machine stitched. And in terms of imperfections, you can often find a lot of them on some of these top glider models. This one seems to be fairly well made. You can see a little bit of imperfection right there. But again, that's kind of to be expected on lower price point soccer balls. But anytime you end up with these kind of wonky shaped panels like this with poor construction or poor build quality here, the ball itself tends to warp really quickly. It doesn't feel very good. It doesn't end up feeling like a soccer ball. It almost feels more like a volleyball to me. And honestly, I'm just not a big fan of this. As far as the panel construction and panel material is concerned, it's a foam base with this kind of plasticky film on top. Feels very cheap and not going to be particularly durable either. And also top gliders have historically been very, very sticky to the touch. This one is incredibly slippery and I'm not sure why they decided to go this way. Uh, again, just not all that great. There's a look at the valve if you wanna see that. It seems to be fairly cleanly finished off. But again, for $30, it's usable, it functions as a soccer ball, but in all honesty, I don't think it's a particularly good quality ball that is worth your money. It looks like the World Cup ball from a distance, but it feels absolutely nothing like it. I'll say this one more time. If you're trying to decide between the top glider and the top replique, spend the 10 extra dollars, buy the top replique. It's so much better. And finally, we have the Mini, which retails for $13, and it's a mini soccer ball. So a lot of people will be buying this as a gift, as a collectible, as something to put on their shelf, something to kick around their house. A lot of people even use mini balls as training tools to practice their juggling, because obviously the smaller size ball makes it a lot more difficult. You can do a lot of things with these. Anyways, what's cool about this one is it does maintain the same panel shape as what you'll find on the official match ball. So in that regard, it definitely is a replica of the real thing as it does say match ball replica right there. 
right where it says mini as well. You're not gonna find the FIFA approved stamp here and obviously it doesn't have the same texturing as what you'll find on the official match ball. But the big thing about this is that it doesn't have a valve. That's because you can't put air in it and it doesn't lose any air either. I'm not entirely sure what's on the inside, but I can tell you that it's not air. It's very, very firm, basically what you would find as from a fully pumped soccer ball. So I think it's some kind of dense foam on the inside. And really for actually kicking and juggling, it feels okay. It doesn't necessarily feel like a true soccer ball with obviously an air filled bladder, but it gets the job done. And it's kind of cool because most mini balls, you'll use them for a little bit, then you'll put them on display and they tend to lose their air really quickly. Then they end up sitting on display completely deflated. This will maintain its look, it'll maintain its shape. And the fact that it doesn't hold any air, I think is just a really cool idea in general. So if you wanted a cool collectible or just a mini ball that looks like the 2018 World Cup ball, I can recommend this. Anyways guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. Again, if you're interested in any of the balls that I talked about in this video, you can click the first link down below in the description. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. You'll be able to get any of these balls below their normal retail price. If you have any questions as always, leave them down below in the comments and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked in the description as well. Other than that guys, hope you enjoyed the video. As always, thanks for watching.